And we Thank will you. go directly now to the director and founder of the Center for Election Innovation and Research, David Becker. Good morning to you, David. Good morning, Margaret. Um, if I want to talk about a number of things, but is there anything there that the secretary laid out that you would like to respond to? I know specifically on voter ID and what he referred to as ballot harvesting, uh, you have some views. Well, I mean, I think there, there's room for disagreement in, in the states on a variety of the administrative policies around elections, how many ballots a third party might be able to deliver from a place like a nursing home, how rigid an ID system has to be and what kind of fail safe is there to make sure that eligible voters don't excluded because don't get excluded from voting because they don't happen to have ID. But I think what we're really worried about at this in this moment of in time right now because of the lies being spread by the losing presidential candidate are the efforts to um, so confusion and chaos into the vote counting and certification process. That's what I'm really work, working on and looking at in the states. And it's something I know Secretary Raffensperger and his colleagues, both Republican and Democrat around the country, are looking at. Mm -hmm. um, and we mentioned that earlier with uh, the Speaker of the House. Uh, but looking nationwide, 25 states enacted 62 laws that expanded voting since 2020. Nearly all of them have Democratic-controlled legislatures. 19 states enacted 34 voting restrictive laws. All of those have GOP-controlled legislatures. When you look at that breakdown, what does this say to you? And when it comes specifically to Georgia, is it really the case that what they have done is Jim Crow on steroids, as President Biden refers to it? Because the Secretary of State there says that's not what he's saying. Well, I think what you're seeing, obviously, that's not the sign of a healthy democracy. And our democracy is in crisis right now. I'm as concerned as I've ever been. And certainly in those states where um, Republicans control majorities in the legislatures, those majorities are being fueled by the lies from the losing presidential candidate of their party. We are now over 400 days after what was by any measure the most secure, transparent, scrutinized, and verified election in American history. More audits of those ballots than ever before, more court scrutiny and verification of the outcomes than ever before, including judges appointed by the losing presidential candidate himself. Mm -hmm. And so in states like um, Texas, Florida, Arizona, and yes, even Georgia, we see election policy being considered in a way that's not entirely constructive. It is partisan. It's based on some false premises about how, how well the election was run. The facts are in Georgia and in those other states and throughout the country, the election was run exceedingly well. It's remarkable how well it was run with uh, resources being sca scarce with the highest turnout we've ever seen and in right. the middle of a global pandemic. So in Georgia, it's true compared to most of the other states, Georgia actually has pretty accessible voting policies. Um, but that being said, the legislature uh, removed some powers from Secretary Raffensperger, who he and his staff did a remarkably good job in 2020. Um, they have injected some chaos into the counting and certification process that doesn't need to be there. But in other states like Texas, it's even worse, uh, where the voting laws are much more restrictive and there's even more chaos being injected into the process. So because of what's happening at the state level, the White House is making the broader argument that there needs to be more federal election law crafted. They are putting their shoulder behind two bills, and we're going to hear from the president in the coming days about the Freedom to Vote Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. The White House says these are absolutely essential. They don't have the votes to pass either of them. But on the premise here that there needs to be more federal oversight, do you agree? I think that there could be some value right now, given the uh, unprecedented attack on our democracy and the fact that tens of millions of American citizens have been uh, led to believe, fueled by lies, that our system does not have integrity. And just to be clear, we have the most integrity in American elections than we've ever had in American history at this moment in time, and that will continue to grow. But um, there could be some use for some federal standards. There's a lot of good things in those two bills. But as you noted, it's highly unlikely that either has even 50 votes to pass the Senate. But if there could be a truly bipartisan effort to look at the crisis issues in our democracy and try to find ways to resolve them so that we don't have confusion and chaos in the post-election period, that the person who gets the most votes is declared the winner yeah. under systems that are transparent, that would be really good. So one of the ideas that was floated in the past week was trying to um, update the Electoral Count Act. 
act. So that's something that even some of the Democrats on the January 6th committee, including Congresswoman uh, Lofgren, ha had supported updating that kind of arcane law, which was at the heart of some of the premise of disputing January 6th. But both the vice president and the Senate minority leader both really shot that down this week. In fact, Senator Schumer said clarifying the Electoral Count Act is a distraction. And so this is a quote. It's sort of like saying, well, I'm going to rig the game, but then I will make sure you count the score accurately. What the hell is the point if you rig the game to count the score accurately? Were you surprised to hear that kind of language from the Democratic leader? And, and, and should it be reformed, the Electoral Count Act? Yeah, well, there's obviously a lot of um, politics being played right now in terms of getting whatever bills that can be passed moved in the next year as we enter the midterm elections. Um, but uh, I agree with uh, many experts and members of both parties that it'd be good to clarify and revise the Electoral Count Act of 1877, 1887 rather, um, and, uh, and, and to make it clear that the joint session of Congress is purely a ceremonial session. They are right. just counting the votes. It's really, it's really like the Oscars. They're not voting <laughs> on who won best picture. They're just announcing who won best picture. Exactly. And similarly, exactly. that's what the joint session is. And I think that'd be really valuable. Exactly. Uh, thank you, David Becker, for your perspective, as always. We'll be back in a moment.